How you doing, Duff here? As you can see, there's a very large box that was delivered to our house today. And um, I, I picked it up a little bit, and this, this box and the weight of it is very close to what I remember the uh, Gottwee Monster being. So I've heard everybody from the New York crew comment on how substantial this wheel is, so I can confirm that. This just arrived today, sent by uh, Chris Yim. I appreciate all the great testing that he's done. The community up in New York City, him and all the other people that uh, rode the wheel. I think they really did a good job of uh, giving some valuable feedback to the wheel. Right, I need to try to do this without damaging the box much because this wheel has two more stops to make. Charging adapter. The trolley handle and mud guard. Right, and get down to the big behemoth. Yep, it's heavy. There you go. The one and only 9 bot Z10. Someone scraped the pedals. Oh no, that's okay. Um, so let's see if Chris left me any charge here. Sean, you figure out where the button is here again. Oh no, look at that. Full charge. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate that. That's very nice. All right, so let me um, let me assemble the trolley and the mud guard, and uh, so we can get busy. Okay, so one thing I can confirm immediately is the nine bot Z10 is the thickest wheel I've ever worked on. Um, it actually doesn't, I try to put it on one of my stands, it doesn't fit on any of the stands. I, I would need to make something even wider to uh, attach this. The instructions, look at the instructions uh, regarding the mud guard and trolley handle. So anyway, though, I'm working with the Chinese instructions, and uh, let me get this attached, and then I'll recap it as soon as I'm back. Okay, it's a little, a little odd. you got five screws here. You take those out, and then there's like a little filler piece that you just pop out. I guess it, if you don't want to use the trolley handle, you just leave that in there. So take that out, and then you have the room to slide this into that slot. So I need to do the same thing on the other side. And they do provide a, a little tool taking these screws down, it's a, it's a hex head, so that's handy. Okay, I got the second insert out. So now, I should be able to attach the mud board. Right. Okay. Now there was, one, there was one loose screw in the box, and I assume maybe it's, it goes here, that there's two holes up at the top to secure the mud guard. That. Maybe I'll find the other one, maybe I won't, but I don't know if it matters or not. Let's see. That appears to be too big of a screw for that spot. Okay. So then instead I will install these two side screws. So basically the progress the um, process is you install the mud guard and then you install the trolley handle on top of it. So there's there's two screws a piece that are used for the mud guard. I'm sorry, two screws on each side for the mud guard, including two up top, which I'm not quite sure where they are, and then three are used for the trolley handle. Okay, so now we have the mud guard on. Let's see what that looks like by itself. It's very, uh, I mean, it looks like, it almost looks like it's part of the mold. It's, uh, you're definitely not gonna have water spraying up if you uh, affix the mud guard, for sure. It's pretty slick engineering here. It's very tight tolerances, but the, the handle does just fit very snugly around the, the mud guard. And then, uh, like I said, 
that you just have three screws on each side to hold that in. Very well engineered um, setup, but uh, that's kind of what I would expect from a 9 bot. Okay, I have it on. Um, one screw did not go into the trolley handle. I wonder if that brass insert is possibly damaged, so I'll hold on to that, pack it back up. There you go. Trolley, trolley handle's on. And um, yeah, this, this was commentary from other people how it feels a little flimsy. It does, especially based on the weight of the 9 bot and how there's no, just a little bit of a locking detente there, but not much. It's not substantial, so it would be easy to have it slip down as you're already you're using it. So, okay, I think I'm about ready to ride this thing. It is crazy how wide that tire is. I can almost make it just stand here. All right, here's some quick size comparisons. There is the Z10 against a Monster. And even though it looks like it's, uh, you know, maybe two thirds of the size at max, it, it, it feels uh, like it weighs almost the same. And it is close, because that's an 18 or 1600 watt Monster, so that's um, about 60 pounds, and the 9 bot Z10 is 55. Oddly enough though, the Monster, even though it has a much uh, larger diameter tire, the pedal height actually looks very similar. As far as the clearance of the ground between the Z10 and the Monster, it's surprising. All right, there we go with the Z10 compared to my M Super V3. That, that's not an S3 Plus, that's an original V3. Uh, Size-wise, it's very comparable. Again, surprisingly, it looks like the Z10 pedals are slightly higher than the M Super. The reason I find that surprising is because I thought there was a lot of commentary at one point where people were saying the Z10 pedals were low, but um, they don't look any lower than what I already have. And uh, just for fun, there you go, the Z10 against the M10-3. They're not obviously competitive uh, wheels. Intended, intended use is much different, but there you go. That's what an M10-3 looks like next to a Z10. Okay, so before I take it outside, I need to get the I do have the 9 bot app already on my phone, dating back to my mini pro days. And I did update it the other day in anticipation of this. So let's see if uh, we can connect to the wheel. I know when Chris had it, he said that he uh, applied, I guess, an update that applied an update that the uh, wheel was asking for. Okay, it's searching. settings later and I need to adjust a whole bunch of stuff. The most important thing that I'm interested in is the riding settings to see what it's set at. The alert at 20 miles an hour and I just have the 27 mile an hour alert on. Assisted braking I have turned on and somewhere there's a setting for ride hardness like the old 9 bot one had. Okay, I've not found out the firmness setting yet. I guess I will around for that later. So at this point, I think we're ready to take it outside. Okay, so um, some initial observations about the exterior of the wheel. Um, pedals, here, here's the 9Bot1 pedals design, which uh, people aren't real happy about, although I did see online something about that they're going to install pre-cut grip tape to install here, so you have a better traction. I know Chris and the guys attached this grip tape up here because they were having issues with slipping, so um, it sounds like the production units will have grip tape installed or it will be, it will come with the wheel. Uh, fit and finish of the wheel looks, as you would expect with a nine bot wheel, very professional. Back here, I believe, you know, 
That's the disengage button for the wheel so when you pick it up it doesn't spin. And it makes a little audio noise when you do it so you can kind of tell that it's disengaged. Um, that's a nice feature, something the Inmotion V5F has already that uh, I own that wheel. It's, it's a nice feature, um, but uh, it's not a make or break thing for me. Up top here you have a rubber cover covering the charge port. You have a super visible uh, battery indicator, which is really nice, right here on the top. And on the other side, I, I saw this, it was a little strange, or it wasn't strange, but I didn't know what it was. I have this cover here, and it looks like what this actually is, is the way that you access the, the um, inflator. Like if, if you have to add air, you, you do it through this hole, is what it appears to me. So that's a new approach to that uh, issue that I've never seen before. Uh, got the trolley handle on there, nice and secure. And, you know, like everyone said, it's not great, but it's it's serviceable. It'll get the job done. Easy to retract. I think I'm ready to step on this thing and hope I don't kill myself. So even though the pedals are not uh, very long, they are wider than I recall with the 9 bot ones. Actually, have some space in the outside of them, which I'm not used to. But here we go. This is the Voiden. The whip, the Voiden. The maiden voyage of uh, first old Florida EUC rider in a Z10. Did you say old Florida? Old Florida rider. Going straight, it just it wants to go straight because the tire is so fat. Yeah, you'll have no problem trying to get straight. Just, just one time I gotta wear my knee brace. Okay, so that, was, that feels interesting. Um, I heard Chris describe how when you're going straight, um, it's almost like you hardly have to balance. It just it wants to stay straight because that you have so much surface area on the uh, pavement. The pedals are interesting. Like I said, they 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 seem to be the same length as a nine by one E plus. Unfortunately, I don't still have mine, but it seems like they're much wider. Maybe my memory is just bad, but I don't recall having that much whip. I mean, this this feels wider than my M Super pedals uh, that I have on the M Super and on the Monster. So. That's odd. I don't remember anyone else describing that, but it definitely feels wide to me. So I don't know. But I need to ride around some more and test. Um, the um, Z10 does not have any side pads, which um, you know, uh, Ninebot already did with the S1 and the S2. So, um, yeah, I'm curious how it's going to feel when I need to try to lean into it. Because I find myself wanting to put my feet out so I, so I have some more room to, to angle the bot. But when you do that, then you don't have any contact with the shell if you want to try to squeeze it and lean. So, it just takes some getting used to. Um, Power wise, my initial feeling and again this was just very limited but um, I would say it, it feels similar to the M Super which I which which I like um, it, it, it seems to ramp a little bit but again maybe I'm not ramp slowly I should say but maybe I am not uh, leading as aggressively as I need to so I just I need to do a lot more practice obviously but it's cool man it's it's, it's a different feeling very very different Interesting. 
If I use one word to um, describe how the Z10 feels right now, it would be dense. It just feels like a very dense wheel. Yeah, dense. Trolley handle is definitely a good thing unless it's arm day, you know. But this thing is not light. All right, we're hoping to hop in the Prius here and go over to the school and ride. There's a uh, big nasty gray cloud in that direction, but uh, hopefully its uh, bark is wor worse than its bite. We'll see. Z10, Mini Pro, assorted equipment. Okay, we are at the school where I cut my teeth and uh, bruised my body learning. Me too. Well, Cindy rode the Mini Pro around. School is our school. Yes, this is our this is our EEC school. So I'm just going to ride around the property here and see uh, how some of the things I would normally do my other wheels feel on the um, Z10. I always like the uh, Segway app. Very clean. Um, they do a good job of updating it. It actually shows uh, speed in miles per hour instead of kilometers per hour. It has an imperial measurement option, which is always nice. It's the only app that uh, I've seen with EUCs that does that. Native app. Weird, I feel like I want to do uh, similar controls as I do with the Monster, where I'm kind of using my, my legs to lean into the top of the shell, but since this is, has a much shorter profile, you do that lean and there's nothing there. So it's definitely a, a hybrid riding style that I have to use with this. Say hello. Got up to 17 miles an hour so far. I'd like to see if I can hit 20 maybe. I don't really need to go much faster than that, especially just getting on it. Alright, so I'm gonna do a more of a more aggressive forward lean here. Alright, just cracked 20 miles an hour. Feels a little weird, yeah, you know, because again the pedals are so wide and, and the and the uh, wheel itself is so wide. I don't know. Feel a little unsure of myself at speed on this right now, but that, that will get better. So although Cindy isn't feeling up to doing a, a full out ride on this, she did say she will get on it like up against the fence and just you know maybe just go forwards a little bit, so she can say she's officially the first uh, woman in the United States to be videoed riding a Z10. So I'm going over these speed bumps to get a feel of what this uh, tubeless tire feels like. But yeah, yeah. I can see what they were talking about. It is definitely very firm over there, and if if you aren't ready for it and you ha don't have like your your knees in shock absorbing position, I could definitely see that catching you off guard and launching you off the pedals. So yeah, be be ready for bumps. If you're if you are a stiff legged rider, you are uh, gonna have some issues, I think. I would say uh, when you're turning this at high speed, you have to really commit to the turn. I mean, you can't just kind of baby it. You gotta, you gotta lean. Uh, use your your body weight more than uh, you typically might have to with a normal whip wheel. Definitely have to use more body English. Although, you know, I, I can turn. I'm turning pretty uh, tight here. You can still do this, but uh, doing it at speed is a little bit more difficult. Okay, trying to do some aggressive braking, get some wobbles when I do that. But the uh, the response felt felt decent. Not it's not bad for me with the wheels I have. It, it feels totally in line with what I have. Um, so it's yeah, I have no problems with the power. All right, so Cindy is standing on it to see how it feels. Wow. She's she is she is the first female I know of that's uh, on film in the United States. Riding a Z10 back and forth. 
I'm telling you, going straight, it feels very stable. I know, I'm just trying to get the feel of yeah. it, the weight. Don't the pedals feel wide? I mean, look, oh, look how much. so nice. Look how much space you have to the outside on those pedals. Well, you like to go outside. I like to hold it. No, but they feel wider than the M Super they, pedals to me. They're incredibly wide. I think they're They're, they're not wide. that long, but they're wide. Yeah, you would need longer, I think. Yeah. But the wide is nice. The width is definitely nice. Yeah, it's surprising. Ooh, mind you, I haven't rode in a while. <laughs> But you see how stable it is going straight? It's very, it's so fat. I mean, it just, it doesn't want to tip. Which makes it tougher to turn, but going straight, yeah, pretty easy. Isn't that weird? Yeah, it's Defi good Definitely feels different than anything I ever rode. Yeah. Actually, the wide pedals probably work, work well with your uh, with your calves. You probably have more space, I would think. Actually. Yeah, the width between it matches like. Yeah, I didn't think because it doesn't it doesn't have any any pads on the side at all. No, but it hits my calves mm -hmm. perfect. Yeah. And the thing is, because the pedals are so wide, like already wide apart, mm -hmm. it definitely gives space. Yeah. It looks so freaking solid and huge. I, I was saying outside or at the house that the one word I would use to describe it is dense. It just feels like a dense unit. It just feels dense. Definitely. Almost feels like it's made out of lead. I like it, you know. The weight of it though, could I just now freely and just, you know. Probably. Because my knee is so I don't want to risk. Yeah, it's heavy. I won't play that. Maybe if I wear my. All right, so um, at least from a, a two-minute test, Cindy gives it her stamp of approval. I like it the mm -hmm. Yeah, it does, it does fit her well, definitely. Yeah, I feel the type of person who rides holding it. I think you enjoy it too, and you like the outside of it. Yeah, well, it feels weird to me though, because it's ouch. Cute. I'm gonna go on the track and do a lap around the track quick. We're doing a quick lap around the track here. It's a, it's a gradual turn, but you can do it pretty quick, so I'm curious how it feels. And as is always the case, I always feel more comfortable leaning and turning to the left than to the right for whatever reason. of that stain. Let's see. Yeah, the acceleration and deceleration feels um, steady. You know, it's uh, it's great. It's, it's, it's it feels controllable, predictable. So yeah, that feels fine to me. All right, so I want to go towards the back there. All right, so I know this grass is very uneven. For me riding my other wheels across it very bumpy so i'm curious how the z10 will feel in these conditions there are some unexpected ruts from vehicles driving through here they've had them almost throw me off several times there was one and this is pretty high grass um, grass is probably four or five inches high mm -hmm. Successfully navigated out of the grass. Awesome. All right. When I was over here the other day, I said I wanted to see how I do riding the um, Z10 in and out of these uh, light little, nice little tight turns. And I can tell you, based on some of my other slow speed maneuvering, that I should be fine. So I can definitely turn it. Well, going slow. That's, that's, that turns not much different than, than what I can do on a normal width wheel. It might. So if 
perhaps you could hear that uh, there's some thunder in the background as we were riding back this way the uh, the school lightning alarm went out or went off it's it's a uh, pretty terrifying it sounds like a nuclear launch uh, warning so Cindy Cindy might head back ahead of me and I think I'm gonna ride a little bit more yet so I wonder what carving is like in a Z10 Let's see can we do it I like we can't do it like Tishon but we can do it yeah I almost feel like you almost have to, to, to get really strong turning you almost have to kind of shift your weight back a little bit you know as you're leaning into it my knowledge. That might not be an accurate statement, but let's just make believe it is. Okay. It might be. All right, Cindy is shoving off for home, and I'm going to kind of go back to the way uh, where we came from and, and uh, maybe fart around a little bit more and go out through the waterways development and back Hamaki Road. So it'll be a short little commute. See how it feels. So I think the way that I'm going to cover this is going to be different, you know, than what the New York City guys did and I think that makes sense because you don't want everybody kind of covering the same things, uh, reviewing it the same way. I think variety is helpful to the potential buyer. And I don't know that, I have, that I've mentioned up front, although you probably have seen the logo that's uh, at the bottom of the uh, video, but uh, we owe this opportunity to Jason from eWheels.com. He's the one that has uh, allowed us to test this unit, sending it up to New York City first, down to me. I'll be sending it out to Chooch in Denver, and then Chooch will be sending it to Marty. So, yeah, big thanks to Jason for allowing us this opportunity. I think it's uh, it's really great, great idea. And uh, yeah, I'm already getting. It, it feels like I, I'm already adjusting. My body is adjusting to uh, throwing this thing around pretty quickly. So that's cool. I mean, I can even go backwards. So can't be that bad. If I can do it, anybody can do it. Anyways, what I was what I was going to say was, um, you know, how my style is different than uh, Chris's and Tishon's and uh, and Marty's and Chooch's. So I think it'll be good for anyone that's interested in this wheel to get the different perspectives. Um, I have uh, probably four or five different areas that I'm hoping to take this to test it out and see how it does in those conditions. I have the next two full days off, so I, I literally plan to outside of taking time to charge this I plan to dedicate as much time as possible to putting it through its paces so it's gonna be a lot of video I think this foot position is just about right for me I'll press up against it, uh, but yeah, that feels pretty good. Right. Cruising this speed feels very, very easy. Uh, very stable right now. Doesn't feel like the wheel is working at all. Current temperature 114 degrees, not bad at all. I'll at least tell you one spot that I plan to go, which you probably already know, is to Dunkin' Donuts and back. That's a staple test for me, almost like a overheat hill for Marty. Okay, heading out of the waterways development, getting on a mafia road for some brief, straight, but relatively high speed cruising. Okay. Still feels pretty stable. A little bit of wobble, you know, because I, I literally have no part of my body touching the shell at all. Um, so yeah, you feel a little bit of a wobble, but uh, the key to, to uh, controlling wobbles is to try to ride relaxed, which is uh, what I'm doing. 
All right, we do have this standing order from the um, construction that's going on right here. So you're going to get a first-hand look of how the mud guard does as far as controlling water. Not very deep, but definitely wet. I can report I felt nothing going up my rear end, so that's a good thing. All right, cross 25, that's, that's plenty fast enough for me. And uh, you can tell it has more to give, definitely. But uh, I feel it feels good on the open uh, road here cruising. Um, the pedal stiffness feels good. I wasn't able to find that setting. Supposedly there's like a zero to four setting for the firmness in the wheel. I wasn't able to find that yet in the app, but whatever it's at now feels pretty good. It feels, if I were to guess, I would say it's a zero. It feels uh, very uh, stiff right now, which is my preference. forward to the uh, Dunkin' Donuts ride. I don't think it's going to be a problem. Okay, so um, here's night one of my uh, experimentation. I'm going to dig some more in the app, I think, tonight, but I think that's going to probably cover it for the riding for tonight and uh, look for a lot more tomorrow. If you like this video, please give a big thumbs up. If this is your first time on your channel, please consider, consider subscribing and uh, feel free to leave your comments, questions, or things you want to know about the Z10 below. Be sure to also check out Fit Farm Chick on YouTube or fitfarmchick.com. She's looking to get to 200 subscribers. So anyways, big thanks again to Jason from eWheels for giving us, giving us this opportunity. And uh, until next time, stuff me out.